Welcome to Public Health On Call, a new podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Our focus is the novel coronavirus. I'm Josh Sharfstein, a faculty member at Johns Hopkins and also a former secretary of Maryland's Health Department. Our goal with this podcast is to bring evidence and experts to help you understand today's news about the novel coronavirus and what it means for tomorrow. If you have questions, you can email them to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Today, I'm speaking to Terry Allen, Commissioner of Health for Cuyahoga County, Ohio, about how his health department is working to protect the public from the novel coronavirus. Let's listen. Commissioner Allen, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about the novel coronavirus. Glad to be here. Could you tell us a little bit about the Cuyahoga County Health Department that you lead? Sure. We're the uh, responsible for providing uh, public health support for communities in Cuyahoga County outside of the city of Cleveland. It's about 880,000 residents. We actually have 58 different uh, communities that these residents live in, and so we work on a number of things also across a five-county region. So a range of public health responsibilities that involve environmental health issues, prevention issues, nursing-related issues, and disease response issues. Well, we've got a big disease response issue that you're working on right now. Um, We do indeed. I'd like to talk to you about what actually happens inside a local health department. So let's start with the current uh, situation in Ohio, which may not be by the time this episode airs, where there are are not cases, but there are people who have had exposures. How does the health department respond to that? Well, the first thing we do is uh, we begin to look at what our normal tasks are in the department and start uh, detailing staff who might do normal uh, day-to-day work like uh, inspecting restaurants or doing um, doing work around tobacco prevention and the like. We begin to detail staff to help to build the capacity to respond to the outbreak. That means some non-essential services will have to be put on hold. And we want to then support our nurses and disease investigators that are tracking diseases uh, day in and day out here in the community and responding to outbreaks. We want to beef up the support and bring some staff uh, around them to help us ramp up as uh, as this outbreak uh, expands in the country and prepare, you know, the Cleveland area to be active in responding and and tracking folks who may be coming back from from, and traveling from areas of concern. At the same time, you're preparing for what a lot of other areas in the country are now seeing, which are actual cases. Tell us about that preparation. Right. So what we're doing now is uh, is we anticipate uh, that there may be, as people are tested here in the future, that we are moving in, in, uh, in a way uh, presuming that we will see cases here. So we then start to connect with our emergency operations center to assure that we have a combined uh, joint information center where all information is shared with the public, with hospitals, with school systems and businesses and and uh, media in, in one central place to uh, make sure our message is clear for the public. They know what to do, they know what the facts are, and they know how to prepare. We think that, you know, we want to make sure that this issue around panic that happens sometimes, particularly because of social media and misinformation, that people have the facts that they, uh, that they aren't panicking, but they're getting ready and they're taking... Uh, steps in their own hands that they can take to try to reduce risk for them and their family. Got it. That's incredibly important. Now, as cases um, come, talk about your role with the healthcare community in Cuyahoga County. We're fortunate that we have a very strong uh, hospital network here and very strong clinical capacity and have a longstanding relationship working with them. So we work with our uh, nurses that uh, do work around controlling infections in hospitals and the doctors that work with those nurses. And so we're in constant contact on a range of diseases. So those relationships are already in place. And that's important that we're not trying to build relationships in the middle of a response like this novel coronavirus. We begin talking with them and understanding where they may have people at risk that are traveling. We make determinations working with the hospitals and the state health department around testing. And if testing needs to be done, we've been working to uh, to get that done. And, and then, of course, uh, looking at the close contacts from folks that may be at risk to make sure that they are uh, staying home and, and avoiding contact with people until we have the results on test. It's a way to prevent uh, potential disease from spreading in the community. Great. Now, you've got to work in doing that pretty closely with the state health department and the CDC. How do you like, what's the, how do you actually 
talk to them? Like, how, how do those communications happen? Right. So it's through a range of, of pathways. You know, there are phone calls. There, there are people embedded from the CDC at the State Health Department. We, of course, have a very strong relationship with the state. And so there are uh, regular conference calls. There are emails. There are specific phone lines dedicated where you can reach out to infectious disease folks at the state or people that uh, can help with media messaging. And so those internal relationships that we have here with our friends at the state health department, with our friends at health departments in the region, we're able to coordinate our messages and our response. And, you know, sometimes in the region, health departments ask each other for assistance if uh, people are busy in one area or another. And so we try to help out one another and make sure that we are the trusted source for information for the public and try to vet some of the misinformation that may come from time to time uh, from social media. Well, that's an incredibly important role. One question I have for you is to tell us a little bit about the kind of people who work in the health department. You know, the novel coronavirus strikes fear in a lot of people. And um, I wonder, as this happens, like, what is the general um, approach of people in the health department? How do they feel, like, you know, towards their job at this moment? Right. I think... The, there really is no substitute for experience because a number of us have lived through outbreaks of H1N1 flu back in 2009. We had some, I had a nurse from Dallas who uh, had Ebola that came to Cleveland, and that caused a lot of concern here. And because of that experience over really 20 years of staff, we have a sense that uh, in the beginning, it's always not clear. It's always uh, sometimes unclear in the beginning about how things will evolve. But we've got people who are disease investigators. We have people with environmental health experience that can talk about adequate cleaning procedures. We have communications uh, people that um, that are good at uh, crafting messages so they're easy to understand by the public. We have uh, uh, legal people on staff that can help us with issues around quarantine and interpretation of rules. And we have uh, additional staff that are health educators that are working with our communications people uh, to address issues where there may be misinformation. We also, at the same time, have 58 different mayors that we need to communicate and fire departments and EMS units. Did you just say 58 different mayors? That's correct, 58 different mayors in our county. And so that's a, that's a tall order for communication, and they all are uh, very interested in making sure that their residents have good information. And so that, uh, that sort of compounds our challenges. We also have a lot of worried well that emerge, and so we need to make sure that we have people prepared to answer the phone to address concerns from worried well who are reading about things happening in you know, the newspaper or on television and wonder how it will affect them and their families. So the job gets pretty big pretty quick. And um, what do you do as the leader of a health department to motivate the whole team to do this really critical service for people in Cuyahoga County? Well, I think my job is to... Uh, we try to maintain a positive tenor and know that this is what the public expects from us. You know, I see uh, public health uh, as a utility. You know, we look at ourselves like the water department, um, like uh, the folks that provide electricity. When you flip your switch, you want the lights to go on, and when you turn on your faucet, you want the water to flow. And so that means we uh, we are responsible for the public's trust, and, and I think people that go into public service take that very seriously. So it's nice to have that uh, frame of mind and motivate people, make sure you give people a break, uh, set schedules so that you can uh, expand uh, the number of staff assisting to give people a chance to rest so they can be at their best, so they can uh, perform at their um, best possible level. Right. So that means expanding out the staff. And we go from, you know, 10 people to 20 people to 30 people to 50. And back up during H1N1, we had a couple hundred staff that were that were working in the community around vaccination campaigns. Wow. So you gear up and you expand as needed. That's what the public wants. Well, that's that's terrific. Um, I really appreciate your uh, sparing a few moments to explain the incredibly important work that you're doing. And I certainly wish you all the best. Glad to be part of it. Take care. Thank you for listening to Public Health On Call, a new podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Please send questions to be covered in future podcasts to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. This podcast is produced by Josh Sharpstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Lamari Morales. Audio production by Niall Owen McCusker with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Thank you for listening.